The last part we'd like to touch on in this lecture is the concept of volume integrals. And I will try to give you a motivation for why, why we need volume integral. So volume integral is really a triple integral. You have seen in a line integral, it's a single integral over one dimension. We have seen a service integral, it's a double integral over two dimensions. Now in a volume integral, we're integrating over three dimensions. Why would you need something like this? Let's take an example trying to calculate the mass of an object that does, doesn't have a uniform density. We know that if you have a small, tiny volume, uh, dVi, and it has a density of rho i, then the corresponding mass is called dMi. But if the, vo if the, if the mass, see, uh, this uh, rho i or whatever it's called, it's, it, it is, is not uniform, what you have to do, you have to calculate the mass of every infinitesimal element, and then you calculate over all the elements. So you end up with having a summation like this one here. So you multiply every small volume by by it by the mass at this by the density at this volume, and to end up with getting the mass at this volume, and then when you sum them all, you get the total mass. Um, as n goes to infinity, summation becomes a volume a volume integral. So this is what exactly we did before in uh, in uh, in uh, in line integrals in service integrals. Uh, as the number of elements in this discretization become too large and uh, every element tends to zero, then this becomes a summation. Uh, sorry, the integration becomes an integral. And uh, a volume integral is actually three-dimensional integral. You have to integrate over x, y, and z, or integrate over rho, theta, uh, rho, um, phi, and z, or r, theta, and phi. Um, and we have seen dv in all cases, and again, a volume integral should give you the same answer regardless of the coordinate you are doing in it. So uh, I may ask you one, uh, uh, an example in, a, in the Cartesian coordinates, but if you can move it to spherical and do it in spherical coordinates, you should get exactly the same answer. It, it simply gives you the total, the, total density, the total mass in this case, if you think of it as a density, or if rho represents, say, an electron density, how many electrons do you have per, um, how many what is the charge you have per unit volume? So it's density, it's column per meter cubed. If you integrate over a certain volume, it will give you the total charge and so on. So it's some sort of density, whether it is uh, in terms of mass, in terms of charge, or whatever the case may be. Let's now take an example. We have a sphere. It has a radius of 3 centimeters, and it contains a, a volume of charge density given by this distribution here. So what this is saying, at every point, Inside this sphere, there is a sphere here, and every point there is a charge. But the charge is, 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 is strong when theta is equal to zero, so the charge is way stronger here. And there is very little charge on the y-axis, where theta is equal to pi, pi over 2. Uh, so the charge is not really uniform. It is, it is more concentrated in certain areas inside that volume. And we would like to calculate the total charge contained in the sphere. Of course, because uh, the volumetric charge density is in column per meter cubed, if you multiply it by a volume, which is meter cubed, you get the total charge, which is in column. Uh, so if, you, if the charge density is not uniform, you cannot multiply directly. You have to do an integral. You have to integrate rho v, the volume, over the whole volume that you have. So really what we want to calculate here, we want to calculate the triple integral of rho v dv. Of course, in spherical coordinates, and we have seen this before, uh, the volumetric element that we have, if you still remember from the start of this lecture, this is how our, uh, I'm not trying to draw it in a, in, a, in a good way, this is how our volume element looks like. Uh, this one here is uh, uh, R sine theta d phi. Uh, this one here is equal to uh, R d theta. Well, this one here is equal to dr. So the volume is, um, the total volume here in this case, or the volume element is equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And don't have to memorize any of that. Uh, if you have a cheat sheet, this should be fine. You should be able to use it directly. We carry out the integral as I explained earlier. This is a, this is a volume element we will be using will integrate over the whole sphere in order to cover the volume of the whole sphere. Uh, and if this is our sphere here, 
Rho will have to go from zero up to the end. Theta will have to go from zero in the z axis to pi in the minus z axis. And phi will have to go from zero to two pi. This will cover the complete volume. So maybe try to separate these two lines here. So these are two lines, okay? So, um, so the charge is really equal to the integral over the volume, uh, volumetric charge density. Uh, R will go from 0 up to 0.03 as shown here. Theta will go from 0 up to pi. Theta cannot go beyond pi. It is 0 in the positive z axis. It is pi in the negative z axis. Phi goes from 0 in the x direction to 2 pi for a complete round. So you can see this is our volumetric charge density. We multiply it by the volume that we have, the unit volume, r squared sine theta dr, the theta d phi. And this will give us our integral. So we have to carry out three integrals, three one-dimensional integral. We first integrate the r part as shown here. So the r part is r squared dr. We integrate it from 0 to 0 0.03. Whatever comes out of that, you multiply it by theta, and then you integrate the theta part from 0 to pi sine theta cosine squared theta d theta. Whatever comes out of that, you multiply it by d phi, and you integrate relative to, to phi. So here we took the 4 out from the, from the integral here, and then we carry the, the integrals one by one. This is how things should be done. So the integral of r squared dr is r cubed over 3. So uh, this is the integral of r. I took it out just to be able to simplify it. The integral of r squared dr is r cubed over 3. Substitute at point 0.03, which is the radius of that sphere. You get here 9 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. Now, uh, if you multiply this 9 by 10 to the minus 6 by the 4 we had in the integral, you get 36, 36 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. And then you carry out the integral relative to theta. You are integrating from 0 to pi cosine squared sine theta d theta. The integral of cosine squared sine theta will give you minus cosine cubed theta over 3. You put the upper limit minus the lower limit. Upper limit will give you cosine squared pi, so this equal to minus 1. Lower limit will give you cosine cubed, cubed uh, 0, which is equal to 1. So you have minus 1, minus 1. This will give you minus 2. This will cancel out the negative sign that we have here. And um, if you simplify, uh, this will end up with this number that you have there. So uh, 36 over 3 will give you 12. You multiply by 2, you get 24 by 10 to the minus 6. The last integral we have to do is the integral relative to phi. So you integrate d phi, the integral of d phi will give you phi. You put upper limit minus lower limit, then you multiply everything by 2 pi, and the final answer will be 48 by 10 to the minus 6 column. So this volume has 48 by micro columns total, total in the whole volume, uh, given the non-uniform charge distribution that we have.